welcome to Math Mini Lessons. In this lesson, we're going to compare fractions and decimals. As I'm modeling, look to see how I demonstrate all three of the criteria for success during my examples. We want to make an apples to apples comparison, meaning we want both of them to be the same. Let's look at this problem. Jennifer and Chloe are comparing 8 tenths and 0.74. I don't want to say the name right now because I don't want to give it away. They decide to use base 10 pieces to see which value is larger, express both values in base 10 shorthand, and then compare both values with the correct symbol. So what I want here is, let's say I want them both to be fractions. And how would I express that? Now for 8 tenths, since I know these are ones, these are tenths, these are hundreds, I know I'm going to use 8 of these to make 8 tenths. And to make 70.74, I can either use 7 of these and 4 of these, or I can just use 74 of these little bits. Either way will work. So let's just think about this for a second. Um, what's easier? Like I could use bits and pieces, but it's so much more helpful if they're all bits. So I'm going to do that. I like having 74 bits, but how do I compare my 74 bits with eight, eight of these? So instead of using eight of these skinnies, I'm going to use 80 bits. Now, I can compare them. I know that if I have 80, 80 is way more than 74. So as fractions, 80 hundredths, I know is greater than 74 hundredths. Or my original statement, my original was 8 tenths is greater than 74 hundredths. Now I can say its name. So this is how I can use my base 10 pieces to compare, but it's super helpful when they're all the same size pieces for me to compare. Now I want to show you what if instead of base 10 pieces, I just use my table. And you know how much I love my table, so let me just draw it super fast. Ones, tenths, hundredths. And I'm going to take my first value, eight tenths, and I know it's going to go in the eights and the eight is going to go in the tenths place uh, because that was my denominator. So 0.8 or eight tenths. And then my second number is easy to put in. So I love the table a lot because it's really easy to turn my fraction to a decimal. It's super easy when the denominator ends in 10 or a hundred. You have to do something different if it ends in another number and I'll show you. So the only thing left here is I want to make sure I use my placeholder so I can really compare. And now I can compare and I can see that 80 hundredths is the greater value. So let's write that. 80 hundredths is greater than 74 hundredths. Or my original statement, 8 tenths is greater than 74 hundredths. All right, so you can hit pause and jot this down. And to be fair, it doesn't matter which you'd rather do. You can either change them both to fractions or both to decimals. Do the one that makes the most sense to you. Me personally, I love turning my fractions to decimals, but what if they don't end in 10 or 100? I'm gonna give you another way we can do this. Uh, we're actually gonna use division for this. So let's say we have the fraction 3 fourths. What I'm gonna do, is I'm going to change it to a division sentence uh, by one, I can read it from top to bottom and say three divided this is my division symbol because it literally looks like one divided by four. Um, or you can kind of imagine this little guy pushing over to three and turning it into a long division problem where boop, you can see my three is being divided by four. So you can either read it from top to bottom three divided by four, or you can just imagine it going into um, the house by knocking the three over. Now, what I wanna do, because we're gonna talk about decimals, is we're gonna add a decimal behind the three, and we're gonna pop one on top of it in my quotient. And since most of our decimals go to the hundredths place, I'm gonna put two decimals here in the back. Now, all I have to do is do my regular division. If you have struggles with division, I'll link a video in the comments um, in the description that can help with that. But I can actually divide normally. 
and I just want to make sure that for every number in here I have a number up here so 3 divided by 4 is 0 uh, so I'll go to the next 30 30 divided by 4 is 7 7 times 4 is 28 that's 2 bring down the 0 20 divided by 4 is 5 5 times 20 5 times 4 is 20 subtract and I get 0 so 3 fourths is equal to 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths so if you want to change a fraction to a decimal this is a very easy way to do it now back to the show let's say I have this question this was a state test question which of these is true um, again I have a whole bunch of different numbers here and I want to make them all the same to make it easier I love my table because it makes it way easier when all of them are, look the same and I think turning fractions all fractions to decimals will help so I'm gonna start with the first one a and I'm gonna put my first numbers here's a three and we literally just did the three-fourths so I'm gonna put those numbers here now are these two equal to each other just by comparing them no so I know this is false because uh, 3 tenths is not equal to 75 hundredths very easy when they look like this as decimals it's like an equalizer so this was a let's go to B I have 8 going to the tenths place so I put 8 in my tenths place let's put a decimal and 0.75 add a placeholder you want to have that placeholder there because now we can compare them and our statement is uh, it says that 80 hundredths is greater than 75 hundredths is that true yes it is this one is true it's very easy to compare it when I see it 80 hundredths and 75 hundredths 80 is bigger so that was my B so yep I can see that one um, we'll do the next ones just for comparison just because so my next one is 50 hundredths so I want my zero to be in the hundredths place so 50 hundredths and 0.5 for the placeholder anyway and this one says 50 hundredths is greater than 50 hundredths and that's not true they're equal to each other so that's false they're equal so we have the right symbols and in the last one 0.35 and 2 in the tenths place let's put a placeholder and this one says that 2 tenths or 20 hundredths is greater than 35 hundredths and that is not true the symbol is facing the wrong way so that's also false so you can see like me just having this table and knowing how to change any fraction to a decimal makes me makes it so much easier to compare them just please remember to also use your zero placeholders as you're jotting them down all right hit pause and add this to your notes let's look at our last example here we want to compare which value is going to be greater than two-thirds now again I have a number that a fraction that does not end in two or ten and it's much easier for me to change this one number to a decimal than to change all of these two fractions uh, especially because these all these fractions are gonna end in ten or hundred and this one's gonna end in three so let's just change this one fraction I'm gonna rewrite it um, two over three is the same as two divided by three so remember it's like the little guy pushing the two in there and I'm just gonna divide now this is gonna be a repeating decimal it keeps on going but for our purposes the, we can use this to pretty consistently to compare these numbers so I'm gonna make my table One of my numbers does go to the hundredths place or to the thousandths place. So I'm going to make an extra line there. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And here's my, I need them all to be compared to this number here. I want to know which one is bigger than 66 hundredths. So I'm going to put my first number in there. Not bigger. <laughs> so I'll, I'll even put that in there. Let's put my second number in there. It's a seven. 
little placeholder that one's bigger so I have my value that's bigger now you could go and can make the comparisons the next one here's four tenths 40 tenths still not bigger and even if I put my last one which looks bigger 625 even if I put a place value a placeholder here um, you can still see like even without the placeholder honestly I can see something happening here like I can see that yes these two numbers are the same but in my hundreds place this one's bigger and I, I don't want to just put a zero here because I know I can keep actually dividing here and it's not just gonna be a zero it would be like another six so that's why I didn't want to do that but um, case in point it's much easier for me to compare my decimals than it is to compare different fractions when using my table. So I hope this was super helpful. Jot it down into your notes and practice changing your fractions to decimals or your decimals to fractions. Either way, you want to make an apples to apples comparison to truly compare those two values. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye guys.